stand with me, Guardian. Prove yourself worthy, and the Iron Lords will rise again. Hey, I'm Steve, also known as Terra Mantis, and if you follow my content, then you know I don't regurgitate game news from other sources or press releases straight from the publisher or developer that thousands of other outlets are covering. I don't talk about something unless I've seen and played it firsthand to formulate my own opinion and expectations. And, well, recently I was invited to Bungie headquarters to take a look at Destiny's new expansion, Rise of Iron. While at Bungie, I got to check out the entirety of Rise of Iron's main story campaign, the new custom PvP options, a few new strikes, Archon's Forge, the new open world cooperative challenge, and many other smaller additions with Destiny's new expansion. So without further ado, let's talk about 10 things you need to know about Destiny Rise of Iron. Destiny's narrative in Rise of Iron, just like it has continued to do with all expansions since the release of the vanilla game, ignores answering any of the questions set forth early on, like why your guardian was resurrected after hundreds of years of death, who is the stranger, what is her objective, the significance of the Black Garden, or any intimate details regarding the Traveler or the Darkness. Instead, Rise of Iron opens a different chapter in the story of Destiny, a chapter that looks to the past in place of the future. This is actually a great idea because, let's face it, Destiny's lore has always been its strongest storytelling mechanism. So Rise of Iron takes the player and places them in the lore of Destiny with a narrative deeply rooted in the origin of the Iron Lords, the precursors to the Guardians. And overall, the legend of the Iron Lords is about mistakes of the past that return to haunt Earth with heavy themes of sacrifice and honor. If the Taken King was a story of revenge, Oryx seeking vengeance for the death of his son Crota, and Guardians seeking justice for the many who have fallen in the wake of the Hive, then the Rise of Iron is very much a tale of retribution. Saladin, the expansion's main NPC in connection to those past events, exudes the same persona of honor, sacrifice, and confronting the demons of his past. Those demons take the form of Siva, a long-lost Golden Age technology sealed away by the Iron Lords. This technology is extremely powerful, able to be a conduit to wondrous miracles or, if misused, capable of disastrous consequences. And the Fallen, in their endless scavenge for technology, unearth and free Siva, undermining the Iron Lord's sacrifice and unleashing Saladin's ancient adversary. And in the process, the Fallen, willing or unwilling, become assimilated and absorbed by Siva, augmenting them into splicer versions of their former selves. But the Fallen aren't the only ones affected by Siva. The world itself is undergoing transformations at the will of Siva, as molten pools crack through fissures, red tendrils bore through the earth, and many resources caught in Siva's grasp are gathered, forged, and repurposed to attain Siva's concept of perfection. The other races of Destiny are not safe either, even the Hive is stirred by Siva. As you'll find in one strike, an ogre's eye has been torn from its head and repurposed into a cannon with Siva technology. Truly, nothing is safe from the wrath of the machine. Without question, throughout the narrative Rise of Iron puts forth, Siva is dangerous and its influence vast, methodical, and seemingly unstoppable. Siva's presence is everywhere and felt throughout Rise of Iron. It's a threat, an urgent one at that. But Siva being a faceless entity doesn't give it the same intimacy as Oryx from the Taken King. Oryx commanding the Hive hierarchy in cutscenes and pursuing guardians throughout the campaign gave the Taken King a great antagonistic presence, whereas Siva feels more like a faceless virus spreading without rhyme or reason, simply because that's its nature. Additionally, Saladin didn't connect with me as well as the characters of TTK. Eris and Cade's personalities clashed and meshed so well together, while Saladin doesn't really have anyone to bounce off of. Eris, get your rock. Off my map. At the same time, though, I believe this lone wolf mentality is exactly what they were trying to achieve with Saladin's character. He is, after all, the last known remaining Iron Lord. And throughout the expansion, with Saladin's help, you bring the fight to Siva while honoring the fallen lords of Iron of the past while attempting to rise the Iron Lords to their former glory. Fitting then that much of Rise of Iron's aesthetic is medieval and knightly, reflecting a time steeped in nobility, honor, and loyalty. Which brings me to one of my favorite aspects of the expansion, the feel and aesthetic surrounding the legend of the Iron Lords. For a game like Destiny that straddles the line between science fiction at times like with the technological Vex, or space magic and mysticism like with the Hive, it just feels extremely fitting then to have an expansion themed and designed with medieval inspirations tied in throughout. From the stylistic medieval armor of the Iron Lords and the Flaming Axe, to a narrative of unchecked technology wreaking calamity, Rise of Iron reinforces Destiny's core themes of living in a world where magic and technology can be interchanged with one another. 
All right, let's talk about the new social space. Really, the new social space is almost exactly what you'd come to expect from Destiny. It has storage banks, NPCs, quest vendors, and all the usual things. I really can't say anything new about it. I mean, it looks badass. There's banners flapping in the winds of the snow-capped mountains. Its design harkens back to the same medieval theme I mentioned before. Sections are locked off promising vents later down the road, and statues pay homage to the Iron Lords that were. All in all, as any Guardian would expect, it's a place to meet up with friends while grabbing some new quests. But more than anything, Fellwinter Peak is a monument to the sacrifice and duty of the Iron Lords. Which brings me to my next topic, artifacts. Each one of these statues at Fellwinter Peak represents a fallen Iron Lord, and throughout various quests, you can obtain new artifacts bearing the name of each Iron Lord. When equipped, the artifact in Rise of Iron changed the way your character behaves much more significantly than before. Now, this might not seem like a big deal, but it is. The reworked artifacts range from affecting character builds to potentially altering entire team makeups for PvP and PvE. For example, the memory of Scory allows nearby guardians to charge their super faster when your super is full. Or the memory of Silomar gives a vastly improved defense against damage over time abilities, essentially crippling the effectiveness of fan favorite Thorn in the Crucible. One can only imagine the various ways these artifacts, and those yet to be revealed, will be utilized when entire groups are coordinating equipment together to enhance their teams both in PvP and PvE. Alright, so on that note, let's move on to some various aspects of PvE. Let's talk about some of the new SIVA-infected Fallen, new strikes, patrol area, and then the new raid. So first off, obviously the Fallen have been changed by the release of SIVA. For example, the Fallen's ether is now weaponized as it ejects from their body, turning into a seeking explosive red mist. Dregs with their new peg legs hobble into combat and hurl grenades bigger than ever. Also, their bullets no longer seek enemies, but they travel at a much greater speed. Whereas Vandals can now triple tap with that line rifle. And you also better believe the major fallen enemies have been upgraded by SIVA augmentations as well, like the Walker Tank and Servitors. But overall, the new fallen enemies don't offer a dramatically new experience to that of their unaugmented counterparts. But they are altered just enough to deliver a fresh challenge with your first few encounters with the SIVA Transform Fallen. I'd say where the most dramatically changed enemies influenced by SIVA can be found is in the strikes. Like I mentioned before, SIVA is tearing apart, absorbing, and repurposing anything to reach perfection. And in the Wretched Eye Strike, one augmented Archon Priest has removed the eye of an ogre to repurpose it as a cannon, essentially mixing the teleporting mobility of an Archon Priest with the devastating firepower of an ogre's eye beam. Many new challenges like these can be found throughout the three strikes added to Rise of Iron. Like Sepix Perfected, which is a reskinned version of the Devil's Lair Strike, where, at the end, you can find a resurrected and perfected Sepix Prime. Though certain elements to these fights have changed due to the influence of SIVA, I do have to say that it's disappointing that two of the three new strikes are just repeats of previous strikes. The repeated strikes don't change that much to justify their existence. They do fit into the narrative set forth by Rise of Iron, but ultimately the checkpoints are nearly identical to the original strike, and waves or objectives have not altered or changed whatsoever. Halfway through, but we've got major hive reinforcements inbound. The one new strike does have you tunneling deep into a missile silo of old Russia, and the environment is interesting with a vertical descent, but a single new strike just doesn't cut it in my book. The Taken King added a much wider variety to Destiny's catalog. We deserve much more than what's delivered in Rise of Iron after a year of development. So next, let's talk about the Plague Lands, the new area that ties all these aspects of Strikes, Story, and SIVA together. Obviously, the Plague Lands is the new patrol area, and this area is partly comprised of much of the same portions of old Russia that we've seen before, but now the landscape has been devastated by both the infection of the SIVA and a blizzard has swept the surface, displaying the passage of time. Now, I definitely didn't explore the Plague Lands to their entirety, but I can say it's pretty much what you come to expect from a patrol area. It's a big loop and there's a lot of materials to collect and mundane beacon quests to complete. I have no doubt that there's secrets and more interesting aspects to the Plague Lands, but those are waiting for launch to be unearthed by the community. But one of the most interesting aspects of the Plague Lands I did get to explore was Archon's Forge. Rise of Iron's new cooperative open world challenge. Archon's Forge falls somewhere between the Court of Oryx and Prison of Elders. Just like the Court of Oryx, you can obtain various keys which will trigger events of various difficulty levels and loot rewards. Just like in the Taken King, it's a great way to battle with random people and grab loot to prepare for the raid. And on that note, in the Plague Lands, a lot of aspects were hinted at that allude to what we'll run into with the raid. 
For example, there are chunks of resources like metal missing from the environment. We can also find a massive structure that appears to be an enormous fallen servitor. And from the Game Informer article, we know that the theme of the raid was designed with collision in mind. I can only imagine a team of guardians entering the giant servitor's interior to then rip it apart from the inside out. That said, this is just speculation. I did not get a chance to participate in the raid. The raid is going to be released on September 23rd, shortly after launch. The raid is definitely something to look forward to though, because when it comes to raiding, Destiny has some of the best PvE content around. I'd even argue that it's the best one narrowed down specifically to first-person shooters, and Rise of Iron has big shoes to fill. The final fight against Orcs was unforgettable, and it ended in spectacular fashion. From Crota and Atheon to the Fallen King, Destiny has some of the best well-designed six-man raid content out there. And with the way so much of the new PvE content has been repurposed from old material, it's more important than ever that the new raid, Wrath of the Machine, delivers. After considering all of Rise of Iron's new features, it seems fitting that the themes of SIVA is so much about the absorbing and repurposing of existing resources to reach perfection. Because that's what Rise of Iron feels like. It feels like SIVA got a hold of the Taken King's assets and augmented them slightly in an attempt to achieve perfection. In other words, many of the features that were new in the Taken King have now been made standard expansion practices, which is great but it just feels all too apparent that Rise of Iron isn't as innovative to Destiny as Taken King was one year ago. And to that end, I was a bit disappointed with the way so much of Rise of Iron felt rehashed. Like the reskinned and retooled fallen enemies is the main threat. The same strikes we've visited hundreds of times are slightly reimagined. The plague lands are retextured with snowfall of the same old Russia patrol we've gone to countless times as well. And the Archon's Forge feels like the fallen version of Court of Oryx. The Taken King brought so many more new, significant, and exciting features to Destiny, whereas Rise of Iron reskins many of those same ideas without adding much to make it stand out from expansions of the past. This is simply a fact. My best advice regarding Rise of Iron, then, would be to curve your expectations. Rise of Iron doesn't reinvent Destiny. Bungie found its stride with the Taken King, from the way they present a story to the way character progression is approached. Destiny became a much better game from year one into the second year, and Rise of Iron continues those same ideals into year three. So, remember that. Overall, I think Rise of Iron is great. It continues the tone, speed, and quality set forth by the Taken King. But ultimately, TTK was a superior expansion from what I've experienced with Rise of Iron. And honestly, even with what I perceived as a superior addition to Destiny, the Taken King struggled to retain the Destiny fanbase for the year it was the primary content. So what else can I say? I love Destiny. I especially love anything that's new Destiny. I'm just worried that Rise of Iron is going to have a tough time holding over a hungry audience until the release of Destiny 2. That said, I hope I end up eating my words. Or maybe I'm just hungry. I, I don't know. I gotta go eat something. Oh yeah, don't forget to do all the regular YouTube stuff. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the video, subscribe, tell me I'm an idiot in the comments, or mention how Destiny is dead despite there's still millions of people playing it. You know, all that good stuff. Alright guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Where's Ouroboro? Let's just gank him. I don't have anything. <laughs> <laughs> just gank him. Just fucking gank him. This is the Hunger Games.